the creators of Escape the Dark Castle brings you Escape the Dark Sector by Themeborn Games, in which you're going to be playing two to four players, approximately 30 minutes or so, ages roughly 10 and up, and you are one of many different crew members aboard a vast space station, and your objective is to get through this desolate area and get back to your ship and escape but there are many treacherous different passageways and creatures and people that you're going to encounter as you go through. This is a narrative driven dice chucking style game very similar to Escape the Dark Castle with some definitely unique differences. Join yourself with new characters as opposed to the old characters the Tanner and the Cook and the Miller and the Taylor and meet our new characters Lieutenant Miller, Lieutenant Cook, Lieutenant Tanner, and of course Lieutenant Taylor, and the few others that you may have an idea what they'd be called. And load your guns up, put your cybernetic implants in, and begin to traverse the station. Get to your ship and escape the dark sector before it's too late, or you meet the alien hive mind or even the alien queen along your way. Let's go ahead and take a look down below, I'll show you what the game comes with, basic idea of how to play, and then we'll come up and we'll discuss the game and my review. Welcome to the Dark Sector and your attempts to escape it. Now, similar to Escape the Dark Castle, this game has a lot of its previous characters, but now they are astronauts and crew members aboard a space station attempting to get out uh, to their ship and escape. So the Miller, the Smith, and the Tanner, and the Cook are all now basically outfitted for astronaut travel. And they're all now lieutenants, of course. Go ahead and choose the number of players you want. I'm just going to go ahead and simply set it up for two and set aside all the rest of the cards of players and whatnot and every single player is going to get their own unique card their own unique die and the die will actually have the name of the character on it so it's pretty easy to know note that you'll be starting at a certain amount of health 12 and mark your character's name as well as your health and everybody's going to get their own pencil as well as their own unique cybernetic implant. You go ahead and pick one of those and place it next to your character. If you want an easier game, maybe you can go ahead and choose one. The rest of the medical records and uh, these specific pens or pencils might not be needed. Then you're going to go ahead and take a look at this board over here. Now, when you're setting up your mission deck, it's pretty simple. You're going to select one entrance. You're going to select four chapter one cards, which are going to be noted by this single blip here. For Chapter 2, or Act 2, which is going to be these two blips, and then for Act 3 cards. And then finally, you'll finish it off with a boss of some type, and the boss is going to be like an alien queen, or maybe even the entity. And then you're going to set aside the rest of these cards. These are all just here for replayability. The next thing you'll be doing is shuffling up your item deck and placing it on the item pile. You have your mission accomplish and mission defeat cards that you'll place here. They're basically prologue cards. You'll be having these die, which are basically going to be die that you'll be using to defeat enemies. That These are going to represent their health for the most part. You're going to have these hit die, which will determine whether or not the enemies are going to be attacking you when you do your ranged combat. And then you're going to be getting these different types of die here for ranged combat, whether it be electric or plasma or simple basic bullets. Go ahead and place your your active medical drone here and your tactical combat action flank right here. Make sure that it's on the white side because if it's on the black side that means it's been exhausted. But don't worry, they do refresh after every single one of these has taken place. These are your player reference cards. Set them next to everybody so they can see them. And then of course go ahead and take the rest of the medical implants and set them aside and have your starting weapons available at the beginning of the game because you will be getting them once you flip over your first card. Speaking of that, let's begin the game. All you gotta do to begin is have anybody choose to draw from the top. It's a simultaneous game and all rounds are taken simultaneously as well. So in this case, I could have like Lieutenant Taylor go ahead and flip this over. You'll read any of the text, the story text that's gonna be in the game. You're also going to do anything that might say. Sometimes it'll tell you to manipulate the deck or your character. Sometimes it's boosts or benefits or sometimes it's going to be you know drastic difficulty checks. And then of course, you're going to be getting starting weapons. When you get starting weapons, generally speaking, you're going to be getting them and placing them next to your character. And for the most part, they're going to go ahead and get their ammo. And then you're going to go ahead and move on. And it'll tell you when to move on. Generally, it's after you defeat something or accomplish something or talk to somebody. And always remember, the player who flips a card over is the one that's going to have something something likely to affect them. So if the Lieutenant Abbott were to flip this card over, they would read the flavor or flavor text or story text. And then it says here, you lose one HP as a shot meant for 
for him strikes you, which means that you take one simple damage just because you flipped over the card. It's benefits and there's negative things that can happen when you flip over cards here. So choosing who flips over cards is very important. Finish the rest of the story or the rest of the action. Sometimes you'll have a choice, other times you won't. Sometimes you'll be just put straight into combat. And combat works like this. You're going to basically check to see the health of the monster and place the exact black die underneath it. So in that case, you got two fists and you got an eyeball. And then this is a based on number of players. If this is a two player game, you'll take two of any of the die here, roll them, and then place them next to the baddie. Down here, it tells you the amount of cards you're going to be drawing from the item deck to distribute even uh, to any number of players. And over here, it tells you the amount of damage you take in a ranged fight and melee fight. Over here is going to tell you how much damage each of the different types of weaponry will do to this baddie here. And combat's pretty simple. It is simultaneous. You're going to have the ranged combat first and or a bonus flanking round, and then you're going to go into melee combat. If anybody enters melee, that will end the range. The range is pretty simple. You'll use your bullet or bullets. You'll take a hit die. You'll roll those. And is if you don't have a hit symbol on there, the enemy will not hit you, which generally would do that much damage. And then this symbol, you'll check to see how much your gun does. In this case, it says two. And you'll be able to do that damage and remove these die off of the character's health, right? If this thing does flip over and is, so it would actually, if this was actually a hit, it would actually do one damage too and you'd mark it on your medical record, which kind of looks like one of those life machines that goes up and down. Really cool, actually. And that would expend bullets. Now, there are a plethora of different actions you can take, but somebody always must be doing combat. You can shoot or flank, you can reload, you can activate a drone, trade, or take cover. Take cover is basically passing, trading lets you trade within, between players, activating drones. You can go ahead and place your character die on here, give yourself a health and flip this over until the next card is drawn. Or you could go ahead and flank, placing your character die here. On the next flank bonus round, you'll basically be able to do one damage plus an extra bonus damage provided you're able to successfully accomplish your goal. And of course, you can reload, getting your gun back to its full ammo and basically shoot, which I already explained. After everybody does that or can't shoot anymore, as soon as that happens, then you're going to go over to the melee combat, which you'll be fighting and you'll be using your character die. And every round, regardless of uh, uh, every round, regardless of there's no hit die involved, it's just people get hit. But if you roll these shields here, it will protect you from the damage. So right now I need to hit these two different types of rolls. And so you'll choose between the players who wants to do certain actions, but somebody must always fight. And so maybe both of them will fight, they'll roll, and they'll check to see if any of the, the enemies have the specific requirements. So in this case, I can get rid of this health here, but unfortunately, because the tailor rolled this, no dice. And it's gonna continue until the baddie loses all of its health. And when that happens, basically you're gonna go ahead and flip over a new card after drawing items from the item deck and distributing them. Sometimes they're going to be useful gear. Uh, other times they can be potions or upgrades or even weaponry. We're usually gonna have four slots in your inventory for your weapons. However, when you get something that's horizontal like this guy, that actually takes up two slots. So you have to determine how you want to hold all of your items and what you want to keep and what you want to discard or give to other players. And then you'll just keep going. A new player is going to go ahead and draw here. They're going to read the text, possibly fight another monster. Sometimes you'll reveal something like this, which is just going to have a story and some unique a uh, mini game might take place or some benefit or just some dangerous result and up until the point where you get to the last and final boss and you'll have to fight this boss here who is extremely challenged extremely difficult and if you're able to go through the entire story of the game and no one dies then you have successfully escaped the dark sector pretty similar to the original with some unique aspects such as the different types of weaponry you'll be getting the different types of guns and uh, bullets and hit die and all that. Let's go ahead and talk about it up above and decide whether you should pick this game up or not. After playing Escape from the Dark Castle and now Escape from the Dark Sector, the first thing that's going to be on most people's minds, I would imagine, if you have the original game, is the differences involved in this one and whether it's worth picking up or is it going to basically be the same game. I mean, there's a lot of games like Bang and, and uh, Code Names, that kind of stuff, which you come out and it's basically just different words, not any new mechanics or basically just a thrown on you know, pasted story, but it's actually just the same style game. That's not the case for this one. This one, yes, does include all of the basic mechanics for the original Escape the Dark Castle, 
but it has unique and new styles of play. You're going to make different decisions and you're going to be incorporating ranged. You're also going to be incorporating flanking. Now, yeah, it still does have that activate medical drone. It's just in a new terminology and you're still going to be able to pass your turn and there's still the basic character die still functions the same way as well as combat. But what's unique about this one here is your ability to start off with ranged and determine if you want to reload and how you want to utilize your weapons and what weapons you use. And of course your equipment inventory slots. And it does a great job of basically giving you just more of the original game and unique twists and turns. Not only that, but this is a completely unique new genre to the whole I don't know what you want to call it, but like the Dark Castle and now the Dark Sector. And so you're going to be getting completely new stories with the same old familiar characters, which is kind of fun. I actually really like that idea of the game, how they kind of just changed them up a bit. I'm excited to see where they take it next. Maybe it'll be a medieval setting. I don't know. But regardless, it was a ton of fun. The story is very in-depth, and if you're a big story-driven person, if you like the original, like a lot of people did, especially a lot of my friends, then this one is going to be even more of that, with a unique and new combat system and of course, it's going to be more complex as well. The combat system is definitely a little more complex because you're going to be incorporating shooting and how you're going to be rolling hit die to determine if you're not hit or not. You have to check the rules. It was, I would say it was complex for us. It took us quite a few times to figure out in our heads how it worked. I don't know if it was a rules issue or my brain issue, but for some reason it just took us a few times to get it under control and understand how it relates to the game. Hopefully my explanation for you will skip a few of those hurdles. I tried to explain it as as I were talking to myself, and myself is not the brightest person, so in that case, it makes it easy, right? <laughs> No, uh, The items, of course, have some similarities to the original game. You've got the force field, the med pack, and the aspired meds. These are going to give you certain boosts for your health. They're going to protect you from taking damage or other people. You're going to get stuff like the rusty pipe, uh, which is once per round in close combat. You can, you can When you miss, you can re-roll the die. And then, of course, you'll get something unique stuff, like the shock pad or prod, like a cow prodder, I guess. Uh, whenever you're hitting close combat, you can roll again and apply both results. Or something like the beam emitter. This thing can basically do three damage and it can do a, a, an, an overheat basically which can make you lose health so some, sometimes it's like a, a give and take with some of these guns here uh, and there's a lot of other weapons as well and as you combine that gear and those items and those weapons together you can make yourself a very formidable character the bosses are definitely epic the fact that you're not always fighting all the time and you can make choices and who draws a card from the deck is still really nice so it's very interesting to choose from because you're basically trying to keep everybody alive and and certain players are going to have to hold back. They're going to have to try and heal themselves while other people are fighting, trying to reduce everybody's health pool slowly together. So you're not having one person just take those blows over and over again. And if you strategize very well, you can easily win the game. Well, not really. I mean, you can you can do much better at winning the game than if you just simply had one person attempting to do everything or everyone just simply over and over again attacking. You need to utilize the actions very well. I would prefer playing this game with three or even four players over two players just because certain characters are going to have a benefit as to what they're going to be rolling. And it tells you the bottom left hand corner of each of these character cards. It'll say, okay, your die are likely to get these two types of icons, but not so much this one here. And you're going to hopefully want to have your team kind of well-rounded because if you don't, it's unlikely you're going to roll what you need to roll and it's going to cost you throughout the game. High driven story, great artwork, same feel and same style with a whole unique theme. And the game is of course very high quality. All of the dice are great to feel, they're great to chuck. And I just love the story driven element of it. Every single game is going to feel different for quite a few Quite, quite many number of games. And if you like that, if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and pick it up down below, link in the description. Now, if I were to choose between one or the other, I would basically say that you should pick 
the castle. If you want something a little more streamlined, straightforward for newer gamers, it's a little more simple. There's a little less differentiation in combat and style and choice. You still get all the simple basic choices you would in this one here, but it's gonna remove the complexity of ranged combat. And if you want something, if you're more of a hardcore gamer, somebody's got a little more drive in the modern gaming world, then you would want to pick up the Dark Sector. It's gonna have a little bit more for you. And there's quite a lot of cards in the game to make sure that no adventure will ever be the same. Regardless though, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Tell me whether or not you should pick up the game, The Dark Sector or Escape the Dark Sector. Okay, outro. Where are they going to go next? A medieval theme. My wife pointed out, castles are in fact medieval themed. <sighs> yep. Go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here at Unfiltered Gamer. You can go ahead and like, comment, and of course subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you can see more great videos or I guess decent videos like this one here, as well as checking our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, and more Kelly's Corner giveaway. There's an image for you as well. Link in the description as well. Definitely check out this game here. It's a lot of fun. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. And join us for our live streams, games we play just like this one every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We got a lot of fun games incorporated for us this week and next week. We have a lot of videos coming out. And hopefully you find one that's going to entice you to want to pick it up, something you'll enjoy. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I hope to escape the dark sector and or the castle and or wherever else we're going to escape from next time. Are we done? <laughs>